from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Uh, Letters About Literature is a special project of the Center for the Book. Uh, it's about 18 years old. My, I'm about to introduce Kathy Gurley, who is the coordinator of the project, and she'll tell you a little bit about how today's project works, and then we will uh, meet, some of the w meet uh, three of the winners from the states. Uh, it's a project that, from the beginning, has asked young people to write to authors about books that have helped shape their lives or helped change the way that they think about themselves. And the project had a beginning of around 18 years ago with Kathy and myself, and Kathy's been a consultant for the Center for the Book for many years, and we started with Reed Magazine, where Kathy was an editor, and gradually, as Kathy will explain to you, the nature of letters about literature has changed, and it's actually broadened in scope, and Target has become our primary sponsor, our major retail sponsor, and that support has enabled us to tie letters about literature to the state centers. There are centers for the book in every state. And this Letters About Literature is a project that we not only offer to them with support from Target, but also want them to encourage, encourage them to use as a basis for reading promotion throughout the states. And many of you saw the state centers who are really, the with the state libraries, dominate our pavilion of the states. So this is an example of a project that is truly national and is one of the projects that helps make really the national festival of the book something that is truly national. And so it's appropriate, I think, that we conclude uh, this, the 10th anniversary National Book Festival, with hearing from the young people and delving right into uh, the heart of one of our most popular projects. Uh, I'm going to. I would like Kathy Gourley, who is our coordinator, uh, to say a few words about the project and explain to you uh, how it's changed its educational tone. Then we will meet the families, hear from the kids, and also uh, hear from the authors to whom two of the letters were written this year. Kathy. Okay, you've got mail. That's an understatement for me. Each year in December, the post office delivers mail bins by the dozens filled with letters. And they come from all across the country, and they come from children as young as 9 and 10 years old, but as uh, seniors in high school as well. And these letters are very personal. They're not writing to me, but I get to read them. Letters About Literature started out as a program called Books Change Lives, but it kind of evolved into a personal conversation with an author. And here's what we do. We ask kids, we challenge kids, write a letter to an author, living or dead, it's okay, tell that author how his or her work somehow changed your view of yourself or your world. We say, don't summarize the book. Why? The author wrote the book, so the author knows what it's about. What the author doesn't know is how the book touched you. The author doesn't know what emotions you felt when you were reading the book or what thoughts entered your head after you finished reading the book. Write about that. Read the book, get inspired, and write back. Well, our kids do not disappoint us. This year, we received 70,000 letters. In fact, I learned new post office lingo. They, the mail bins came in a device called an IRC, which is kind of as big as a refrigerator, and it's filled uh, higher than my head with, with bins of, of mail. My team and I begin to open the letters. We count them. We log them and then we begin to read them. And we eliminated, at, in the first two rounds of reading, 63,000 letters. So only 7,000 letters nationally advanced to state competition. Just to advance to state is a big deal. So what happens next? Okay, so 
the state judges now read the, their state letters and they choose their state winners. And we have three state winners with you here today. So we've gone from 70,000 to about 7,000 to about 150. And then those letters go on to national competition. And the national winners, we pick six, that's all, so 70,000 to 7,000 to 150 to six, and we also pick 12 national honors. But here's the big deal, the, the national honors and the national winners, they earn, in addition to cash prizes, they earn uh, a, a reading promotion grant for their library. The six national winners each earn $10,000 for a school or a library. But they get to nominate the school, and I want to very before, I'm just about done, but in Anchorage this year, Alaska, they had their very first ever national winner. She was a junior in high school. And what she did was, she did not nominate her high school library. She said to us, I want to give this money, $10,000, to a school that needs it perhaps more than my high school does. And she gave it to an elementary school in Anchorage that was in need. And that principal didn't know her. Uh, the librarian didn't know her. So the kids know, they, they, they get it. And, and they're very altruistic. So with that um, aside, I'm gonna turn this back over to John. He's gonna introduce each of our three winners uh, that we've invited here today. They are guest authors, and they're going to read their letters, and they are going to have the very unique opportunity of meeting their author and having the author answer their letter in person. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> first, first, however, I would like to know if anyone is still here from Target. I want to thank you personally for the support that you've given us. Let's give Target a hand. The Target, of course, is the, the major sponsor for the book festival, and they have been here today, but when the person we work with most closely did not make the trip to Washington, but she knows about this, and uh, we were hoping that some of the other folks could be here, but I heard that they also were planning, packing up now and on their way out, but uh, they know that we're here, and they know that we are grateful. Uh, I would like to mention, I'm gonna introduce everyone who's gonna participate this and then it'll be on with the show. If you were here, you already know Katherine Patterson. Katherine is our, of course, National Ambassador for Young People's Literature, the award-winning Katherine Patterson, and you were here to learn why Katherine is our National Ambassador if you sat through the marvelous session she just gave us. Earlier today, she also was the writer and producer of the exquisite course, Family Theater, in which in the first session in the children's division, uh, we brought this successful online serial story to almost a conclusion. Only part of it, the story is concluded, but next year it's going to be a book. So, exquisite corpse is never going to end. And Catherine, we're glad of that, and we're glad to have you here. Uh, the second author who's participating was here earlier this afternoon uh, and is with us again, Michael Buckley, who's a former television producer who's now into the world of children's literature and children's books, and particularly through uh, the Sisters Grimm. And we're going to, guess what, have a, have a letter to Michael as the author of Sisters Grimm. Um, our three students uh, are with us today, and the first one is going to read is Olivia Mark Antonio, uh, Olivia is uh, actually, Olivia, we're not gonna start you quite yet. We're gonna wait just a moment. I'm gonna introduce you and then you're gonna be up in just a moment. Uh, and Olivia is uh, level one in the letters about literature. She was 11 when she uh, wrote this letter. She's 12 years now and her letter is written to Jerry Spinelli and it describes the, uh, the book Star Girl. And Olivia now with her family, and I know her mother is here, is in Great Falls, is that right? Correct? Uh, our second uh, student, and Olivia then, uh, is the one who represents uh, Virginia. Our, geese, our uh, Maryland representative, who since has moved to Virginia, I learned today, uh, is Claire Wang, and Claire is level two, which was grades seven and eight. And when uh, Claire wrote this letter, she was, I think you're 14 now? Uh, tell me, correct me, please. You're 14 now, okay, thank you. 
and uh, she wrote to Catherine Patterson, and her lit letter is about uh, the bridge to Terabithia, and we are very pleased to have Claire here. Uh, the final uh, student winner is going to be uh, Catherine Van Ann Van Kirk, who is 13, and she is the one who wrote to uh, Michael Buckley, and she is. Uh, we're delighted to have Catherine here. She's from Washington, D.C. So these are the representatives of our, 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 our states. And now, Olivia, it's your turn to come on up and read your lever, letter. Let's give Olivia Marcantonio a great hand. Dear Mr. Jerry Spinelli, Stargirl is one of those books. I don't know how else to describe it. It is a book that completely turns you inside out. Many books deal with a character who is different, but none of those characters actually enjoys being different. Stargirl showed me not to change, to be my definition of normal, to be myself, as long as that self does not have a negative effect on other people. This book surprised me. By reading it, I discovered things about myself that I never noticed before. I discovered my strengths in the character of Stargirl. Like her, I don't pay attention to negative peer pressure. I discovered my weaknesses in Hillary's character. I am often determined to dislike certain people. You should care about what other people think of you, but not as much as you should care how you make other people feel. We are all the main character in our own story, but it never occurs to us that we might be the bad guy in someone else's. <laughs> By reading Stargirl, I stopped seeing everyone else as them with a capital T and started seeing people as individuals. Though everyone is made from the same primary colors, it's how we mix those colors to create ourselves that makes us different. Now I fully recognize that you can't treat everyone the same way. What resolves an argument with one person may incite an argument with a different person. I never knew that before. I have learned to accept others' differences by reading Stargirl. Not necessarily big differences, not even important differences. It could be something as small and inconsequential as liking a book series that I happen to hate. Then again, a person might dislike me because of that. I have learned to accept that too. I have learned to tolerate people when the opinion of everyone else strongly contradicts my own. Mr. Mr. Spinelli, before I read Stargirl, I was the same kind of different that I am now. I always speak my opinion, good or bad, hurtful or not. Now though, you and Stargirl have taught me that while being different is good, I have to keep it in control like a bush. In some places you let it grow, and in others you prune it down so it doesn't stick out into the neighbor's yard and annoy them. Mr. Spinelli, you taught me how to be normal without changing, to change my image while the way I think stays the same, to be myself without hurting others. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia. <laughs> now, Olivia, Olivia, stay, stay here for just a second. Uh, Jerry Spinelli was invited to the book festival but could not make it. And we were able, however, just a couple of days ago to get in touch with him. And Kathy had sent the letter to him through his publicist. And he has read it. And the night before last, I got the following response from Jerry Spinelli. And for just a second, you're going to have to pretend like I'm Jerry Spinelli, OK? <laughs> this is what he said. No, Olivia, thank you. Thank you for being the dream reader we writers all wish for. Someone who takes from the story not only what we put in, but even, maybe even, a little more. Thank you, Olivia, for making a story part of your life and thereby affirming something the poet Muriel Rukeyser wrote, quote, the world is not made of atoms, but of stories. And thank you, Olivia, for confirming my own belief as an author that a book is only half done until someone picks it up and reads it. So you'll understand if I think of you as my co-author. Best wishes from Stargirl and me, Jerry Spinelli. And I'll send you a copy of the email. I now would like to invite both Claire 
to come up to read her letter. And I did not mention that Claire is a homeschooler. Uh, and also to invite both Catherine and, My and uh, Michael to come up and take these stools and we will have two consecutive readings and then comments. Catherine Patterson. What brings two completely different people together and creates a lasting bound between them? In what way does it change your lives forever? To me, a friendship seems useless and superficial. I believe that something or someone will always break it or destroy it, erase it with no trace at all. When my family moved back to Beijing, I lost some of my best friends. Years worth of friendship was broken in a matter of minutes. I became bitter and cautious to any potential companions. In a Chinese public school, I was known as the tall, thin Chinese-American girl who had no feelings at all. <laughs> However, I was indifferent to the gossip around me. The hurtful gossip further proved my point. Thankfully, my parents transferred me to a bilingual private school. Slowly but surely, I became attached to some of the people there. In that group of people was a girl named Vicky. Her attitude and characteristics were, was similar to her character, Leslie Burke. Bright and lively, bold and somewhat rebellious. We help each other's struggles. She was a leader and I was a follower. Regardless of our completely different personalities, Vicky and I were soon fast friends. Although my parents started to homeschool me, things remained the same between us. I thought I will always see her again. One cloudy day, someone told me the shocking news. Vicky's dead. I, I felt stunned and helpless that entire day. A car accident took her bright life. Again, a perfect friendship was destroyed in a matter of minutes. Again, I became bitter. Never again should I ever rely on friendship. Never again should I ever have a close friend. I repeated these promises to myself almost every night. As books are one of my escapes from the real war world, I picked up the book Bridge to Terabithia from my dusty bookshelf. Although I've read Bridge to Terabithia before, I felt something different this time. I un understood just Aaron's feelings before Leslie came into his life. I smiled at the adventures J Jess and Leslie had in the magical world of Terabithia. I thought that their perfect friendship will go on forever. I was shocked when Brenda told Jess that Leslie is dead. That, that part is like a clear reflection of my present situation. However, I was curious to see how Jess rea reacted to this event. When I finished her book, I knew immediately what to do. Just like Jess who passed down the valuable lessons Leslie taught him, I'll try to do the same. I remember how Vicky impacted others through her cheerful, creative spirit and strong leadership. Instead of being timid and shy, I will try to help others with my leadership and smile to pass down the gift Vicky left me. I used to think that death marked a ending. However, now I know that it also marks a new beginning for a new friendship. Thank you so much for teaching me this valuable lesson through a book. Thank you for making me understand how God intended friendship to be. Sincerely, Claire Wong. Now I invite Catherine, Catherine Ann Van Kirk, to read her letter to Michael Buckley, and then we will then we will hear from both authors. <laughs> Dear Mr. Michael Buckley, 
I would like to tell you about how your series, The Sisters Grimm, helped me. But first, I think you should know a little bit about me. I am 12 years old, now 13, <laughs> um, and my parents are divorced. When you think about a divorce, you picture two people fighting and then them getting separated. Then everything becomes fine. This is not reality. I am part of a lunch bunch group that is designed to help kids with problems at home. I'm the only kid there with divorced parents, and I'm not the only kid in the grade that has separated parents. This reality makes me feel even worse about what happens at home. Mm -hmm. Amongst all of this, there is my little sister, Caroline. I don't have a great relationship with my sister. I mean, it's okay, but it's not the kind of relationship I would have wished for. Now that you know a bit about me, I would like to tell you about how I started reading your books. The first time I read your book was in the spring of fifth grade, about two years ago. I had finished a book and I was looking for another one. I asked my librarian and she gave me your fourth book, Once Upon a Curse. I had no idea that it was in a series. Of course, I had a few questions, but I dropped them. One early mon Wednesday morning, I was in SSR, Sustained Silent Reading, and I found that I didn't have a book to read. So I decided to look on the card of books that was there for us to read. And I found the first book in the series, Fairy Tale Detec The Fairy Tale Detectives. I was surprised because I had absolutely no idea. Anyway, I checked it out and read it. It was just as good as the fourth bo book had been. I continued to read books two, three, and four again. Before school one morning, I went to see if they had book number five, and they didn't. I continued to look for it, but I just couldn't find it. While I was trying to find the fifth book, I began to think about the characters in the series. I thought about how the two sisters could get along and have a blast without their parents. I realized that these sisters had a strong enough bond that it didn't make too bad of an impact on them. I also began to think about how this could be similar in my life. If I had a better relationship with my sister, we could work through what happens and I wouldn't have to hold it in until that once a month lunch bunch. I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to make the relationship I had with my sister better. The only problem was, how would I do it? I began, to, I began to brainstorm some ideas of how I could accomplish this. I noticed that Sabrina and Daphne spent a lot of time together. Caroline and I spent time together, but not nearly as much time as they did. I decided to spend more time with her. After about two weeks had passed, I began to notice that we were treating each other differently. As time went by, we got closer and closer. It was great, but problems still came up. There was no way we could prevent this, but we talked about everything in SMs, secret meetings. <laughs> During an SM, we would talk about what was bothering us and what we would do to change it. These meetings were like my lunch bunch meetings, but they were private and overall better. Now I feel like I could get through anything with my sister. I never dreamed of having a relationship this strong. I want to thank you for writing this series. One thing which I think you'd be happy to hear is that last weekend, well, not last weekend, but you know, um, I found book number five and six. Sincerely, Catherine Ann Dankirk. <laughs> I go first. I, I asked um, uh, John Cole to give me a minute because I think all of us were deeply moved by Claire's letter. And I didn't have Jerry Spinelli's advantage of seeing the letter first. I heard <laughs> it when you heard it. Um, I think the thing that struck me in your letter, Claire, was how important friendship is. And I know in my life I've had to move many times and have left behind friends that I thought I could not bear to live without. And I've had lost friends who have died, and at my age, more and more of my friends are dying. Um, so um, I think what I've learned through that, and I think what you've learned through that, is how precious friendship is. And that the fact that we've had those wonderful friendships makes it possible for us to reach out to other people in a way that we couldn't have uh, without those friendships. And I'm very grateful that that's what you learned from reading Bridget's Arabic. And you know, I always say that the writer doesn't have a right to tell the reader what to take from a book. Uh, and your teacher doesn't have a right to tell you what to take from the book. No one has a right to tell you what the book should mean to you. And, but it, it makes me very happy 
um, to know that what you learned from that book was how precious friendship was and that you can never turn your back on that. So thanks so much for your letter. Catherine, uh, I'm a, I am a little choked up about, by your letter, and uh, that's not good because I'm 6'3". <laughs> People laugh at you when you cry. Um, one of the things I set out to do with the Sisters Grimm was tell a very simple message, and that is that uh, the real magic in the world doesn't come from wizards and magic wands. It comes from family. And uh, of all the people who have written me letters, you seem to get that the best. I'm glad that the books had a positive impact on your relationship with your sister. And hopefully you can carry that into your adult life. Because as you get older, you'll hear time and time again that you can pick your friends, but you cannot pick your family. But the true magic of a family is that everyone is a little bit different, but they all come together to form one amazing group. I'm very happy that you read that. The one thing I would like to say is that um, I get many letters from, from kids who enjoy the books. I never thought that anybody would even read my book when I wrote it, um, let alone write me a letter about <laughs> it. And. Um, it's truly uh, a special treat. I think that when a writer sits down, well, at least some of us sit down, we dream that we're going to write the next Harry Potter, the next Wimpy Kid, and we're just going to be swimming in money like Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> um, but as you go on in your career as a writer, I think at least what I've come across is that the real treasures um, to me, the real reward of what I do is fans like you who uh, seem to understand me uh, even better than I understand myself. So thank you so much for putting such time and effort into it. And I truly hope that your sister has stopped being such a jerk. <laughs> thank you. And Kathy, Kathy and I, on behalf of Letters About Literature, wish to thank uh, both Catherine and Michael, but of course especially Olivia, Claire, and Catherine Ann for your wonderful letters, for being part of the sharing experience that we've had about important books that not only make a difference, but of course are true letters about literature that affect people in their lives and also have an effect on the authors. And we just, I, I would like to call for a round of applause for all five experiment, <laughs> all five people in this wonderful experiment. And now to, um, to close things for this year's National Book Festival, I'm pleased to introduce Deanna Markham, who is the Associate Librarian for Library Services and for our purposes, Deanna is the, actually the director of the National Book Festival planning team. And if anyone deserves a round of applause, Deanna really <laughs> deserves it. Deanna. Thank you, John. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, authors. Thank you, writers. Uh, this has been an absolutely wonderful day for all of us. And I, I can't stop without giving these wonderful letters about literature one more round of applause. They were terrific. And even though it's hot, at least it's been sunny, and we haven't had to endure <laughs> rain, we're all very happy. And so we end this brilliant day on a singularly happy note. We have come at last to the close of the 10th Annual National Book Festival, a fitting conclusion to this delightful celebration 
of the good things books do for all of us. I'd like you to look around at the young people who are in this room today. When I see them, and I see the festive characters who were in our poster, and I see that young people are connecting to these characters and to authors, I think back upon my own young life when I was growing up on a farm in southern Indiana. And the best thing for me was going to the public library on Saturday. We went to the grocery store on Saturday, and while my parents bought groceries, we were dropped off at the public library. There is nothing that compares to the discovery of books in the public library. And everyone here has had that same kind of delight, uh, the freedom to take an amazing journey that cost you no more time than it takes you to go to your school library or your public library or the bookstore and pick out a book. And it's just a marvelous testament to the power of books to hear what those individual books meant in your lives. And I think all of us who love books have had that same kind of experience. Now it's true that um, you don't always have to go to the library anymore. You can download books to your Kindle. Uh, you can download books from your public library. But you know, you can't have an author signed the <laughs> Kindle book. <laughs> and there's something magical in having the author sign that book too. I think we all want to give the authors a special round of applause. <laughs> So this is the 10th anniversary of the National Book Festival, and we chose the theme, A Decade of Words and Wonder. And it is the words that bring us the wonder. Good writers pave the way for avid readers. Good readers often become good writers. Books are the links of a chain of knowledge and enjoyment that never ends. So all of you in this room, please keep reading, keep writing. Thank you for joining us today, and let's go on to the next decade of the National Book Festival. We'll see you right here again next year, and until then, best wishes. Thank you very much. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.